What are the types, symptoms, causes, and treatment options for retrolithesis? There are three different sections of the spine. The first one being the cervical spine, which is the neck, the thoracic spine, which is the middle and upper back, and then the lumbar spine, which is the lower back. And each spinal section consists of vertebra or bones of the spine stacked upon each other. And each of these vertebras are separated by an intervertebral disc. So you have a, a bone, a disc, a bone, a disc, a bone, a disc. And each section has a healthy characteristic of a normal curvature, meaning each one has a normal curve to make it deal with uh, compression forces, make the spine more flex flexible, and help deal with mechanical stresses that occur in day-to-day -day life. Now, a retrolisthesis is a spinal condition that's normally involved joint dysfunction and normally involves one bone moving backwards relative to the bone, either above or below or both. Most commonly, this condition affects the cervical or lumbar spinal sections, but it can also affect the thoracic section. And if the vertebra moves as little as two millimeters back, it can affect spinal, dis spinal alignment and biomechanics. It can lead to nerve compression, lead to disc herniation and bulging, and can cause a whole host of problems with that small of a movement. So we don't have to be like two or three inches out of alignment for it to have a problem. Very, very small measurements can have drastic effects in the way the spine functions. And there are different types of retrolithesis when we look at when we look at the body. The first common one, most common one, is something called a, re a complete retrolithesis. And a retrolithesis or a complete retrolithesis is when one bone moves back relative to the bone above and below. And this is something called a complete retrolithesis. Now, the, a partial retrolithesis is almost the same thing as when one bone moves back, but only to the bone above or below, meaning either the bone above or below stays with it, and we're only seeing a shift between one bone and another bone, not between three bones. And this is called a partial retrolithesis. So it means one bone moves back to the one above or below, but not both. And the staircase is when we're seeing stair stepping. So we're seeing bones move back in relative to the bones above and below. And then we're seeing other bones move forward relative to the bone below that one. And we're seeing the staircase effect. Either case, that when the spine moves out of these normal alignments, it can cause problems. And the most common symptoms it can lead to is just generalized back pain. You can have back pain in that specific area, localized, generalized through the entire spine. We can have decreased range of motion to that specific area of where you have the retrolithesis. You can have sharp pinching pains related to nerve compression, things like sciatica, and that can lead to a whole host of symptoms like pain, numbness, weakness into the legs. We can have upper extremity radiating pain, numbness, and weakness. We have pains radiating out into the torso, pain radiating up into the head. It can lead to many different areas that can affect because once you affect the nerves, not only can it lead to pains, but then it can also lead to functional issues. It can affect some functional problems to those to the areas that the nerves are controlling, meaning motor function or function of different organs and muscles and tissues because they not only can cause pain, but it can lead to functional issues. You can notice that the spine bulge in a specific area where that retrolithesis is because when the spine moves back, we can see the contour of the skin bulge posteriorly or bulge back right where the retrolithesis is. Now, all of these pains or all these symptoms that can be experienced as a result of a retrolithesis are very case specific and they're very related to the severity, the age, and where the actual uh, retrolithesis is actually occurring. These ca cause of retrolithesis can be also very case specific. The most common thing is alignment. Something happens to affect the alignment of the spine. Many things can affect the alignment of the spine. Things like spinal degeneration can affect alignment, but very often spinal degeneration is a result of alignment. So something happens that shifts the spine out of alignment and normally does not get corrected for long periods of time and the spine goes through it goes through an accelerated degenerative, degenerative process in that area, which can cause the spines to start shifting backwards relative to the bones above and below, and this can lead to retrolithesis. Arthritis is where the person has inflammation or degeneration of the area. Now, very often, arthritis can be broken down into two specific ones. Obviously, I mentioned spinal degeneration is a form of arthritis, but there's also inflammatory arthritis, things like a rheumatoid arthritis. And these inflammatory conditions can eat away at the ligaments and tissues and can cause the spine to slip back or forward relative to the bones above and below. Congenital anomalies, meaning things that you're born with, like uh, hemivertebras or asymmetrical development of vertebrae, 
vertebrates can lead to retral ascesis. Spinal injuries like compressive traumas or injuries to the spine like car accidents, slips and falls, childhood traumas, sport injuries can be very common, can lead to retral ascesis. And a lot of times these things can happen. You don't experience any kind of pain at the moment of injury or trauma, but it shifts the spine enough out of alignment. And then years later, you, you have um, things that start occurring, you go get x-rays taken, you find, oh yeah, you have a retral ascesis. And very often those things occur earlier in life and they sit there uncorrected for years and they cause pain later on. Unfortunately, bone infections, blood infections that can eat away at bone tissue or disc issue can lead to retral ascesis because these type of infections can damage the spine very quickly. So it's kind of like an internal trauma. Nutritional deficiencies leading to weakness in muscles and tissues and ligaments can lead to the spine becoming um, be, becoming unstable in that area, lifting the causing shifting. Any type of neuromuscular condition like ligament laxity issues like an Ehlers Downer syndrome or Marfan syndrome where the spine ligaments and tissues are over lax can lead to the spine shifting. Conditions like osteoporosis where the spine actually compression fractures and shifts back as a result of a compression fracture can lead to a retrolocesis. And of course, overall body weakness, core weakness, spinal muscle weakness can lead to shifting uh, of the spine. Remember, it doesn't take a lot. Two millimeters or greater, it can be diagnosed as a retrolocesis. So when we look at retrolocesis, we know that just seeing somebody's retrolocesis on an x-ray doesn't mean that the patient needs a specific treatment program. Everyone needs to be customized, not only on what we see on the x-rays, but what the patient has experiencing as a result of the retrolocesis and also what the causation is, like what's associated with the causation or the shifting of the spine. Scoliosis Reduction Center, we treat retrolocesis non-surgically, non and we do it using a combination of condition-specific chiropractic care, and we also use therapy therapy, rehabilitation, home therapy, home exercises to not only stabilize the retrolocesis, but more importantly, try to realign the spine back into a better alignment to remove any pressure that's occurring to the surrounding tissues, nerves, and help reduce what the retrolocesis is actually causing and the symptoms it's affecting in that particular patient and create long-term stability so the patient doesn't have to worry about the, that retrolocesis progressing and becoming worse over time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.